Daddy, why do you never show your girlfriend in the YouTube videos? And now that you're leaving Thailand, are you guys going to break up? How much money are you making now? So come on then, tell us what are the best places in Thailand. Oh, and if you could go back and talk to yourself from a year ago, what advice would you give yourself? All these personal questions and many more are going to be answered in today's q and I haven't done one of these in forever. In fact, I can't remember the last time. And now that we're at 75,000 subscribers, I feel like I need to connect with you guys on a personal level. A lot of you have come on board very recently. And if you've been watching the videos religiously, you know that I give snippets of my personal life. But I do try to keep it separated from the adventures. But in a video like this, it's a time where we can sit down, have a chat get to know each other and answer some of the questions that are on your lips in the comment sections and submitted by my Patreons and channel members. So let's begin. So the first question is something that comes up in the comment section actually quite often. Why don't you show Miss P aka my girlfriend? Why do we sometimes just see her walking in front of the frame and why do you never show her? And it's a good question and it's something I always avoid answering in the comment section because it's personal. But the reason is, guys, is there's a very thin line between my YouTube channel and me. And it's a very confusing gray line because my business and my YouTube channel is called Paddy Doyle. And it's about me and my adventures. And at the beginning of this channel, when we first started, we got off to a flying start. We hit 10,000 subscribers, 30,000 subscribers within the first few months. And when we hit the road, Thailand was closed and I was inside filming it all for everybody. So it grew quite large, quite quick. And with that, at the time, this was my first ever endeavor, going solo, starting my own business, starting a solo YouTube channel, leaving teaching. It was scary, it was unknown, it was, it was a confusing time. And because it was successful, I think it fed my ego a little bit. I'm not saying that I turned into a diva, um, I don't think I turned into a big head, but I felt great that my business, Paddy Doyle's YouTube channel, was succeeding. And later, when Thailand went into its third or fourth lockdown, and I was trapped in Samui, and the channel started to dip down, that was the first experience where I saw a negative impact upon myself because of my channel and my business was suffering. I took it as a personal dig. Not blaming any of you guys obviously I felt low a little bit depressed and uh, my anxiety went up I thought oh no people aren't interested anymore and uh, this 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 journey is not of uh, is not going to have the momentum as it once had then when I hit that low point a couple of my friends who have their own businesses and even YouTube channels reached out to me emails and we got on the phone and they told me some really important lessons. And the main one that I'll share with you is that you have to separate your own business with yourself. You have to know when to turn it off and you have to know what to separate from the channel and your real life. I'm already sharing quite a lot of personal information and I just thought, and I was advised, keep it careful, Paddy, be careful. And Miss P, I'm sure you're watching this, she's flying down to Phuket to meet me for the next three nights. She comes and visits about once a month, whether I was in Isan or whether I was in the north. Actually, she never came to Isan because I was trying to get back to her for Christmas. Basically, we do see each other quite often, not as much as we want. Obviously, I'm on the road a lot, but having her in the videos, if she was speaking, if she was meeting you guys, if um, you know, I was sharing her information online, that's just a little bit too much. That's that's going beyond the personal life into the YouTube channel a bit too much for me. You know, I see other YouTubers um, sharing their dating life and stuff, and that's on them. That's on them. I'm just not prepared to take that personal jump that far. For me, that's a little bit... That's just one step that I'm just scared to do. I just... It's a personal choice. So I just hope you respect that. And now that I'm planning to leave Thailand soon, are we going to break up? Well, no. You know, I said in the recent video that I was hoping to go to Vietnam on a motorbike. Now, I told you that's probably not going to be the next series because I want to buy a bike here in Thailand and drive it into Vietnam via Cambodia, maybe even Laos. But I can't do that for several months, at least several months. So I was thinking like, okay, I'm going to go do something active. I'm going to go to another country probably in a couple of weeks, maybe in three or four weeks time, I'll leave Thailand, we'll go somewhere, we'll do something active before we go to Vietnam. And uh, when I'm away, 
Miss P will just be my girlfriend away. Maybe she'll fly over and visit if it's a long trip. She gets quite a bit of time off and if she wants to travel, which she always did before she dated me, she could come make a trip out of it and come visit. Or I can nip back to Thailand. I'm not planning to go to somewhere super far away. So we're not gonna be breaking up. We'll just have long distance relationships between now and between trips and on trips and in the future. So I don't have any plans to break up with her. I hope she doesn't have any plans to break up with me. But we'll see what, you know, whatever happens will happen. And uh, I'm really happy. And I'm trying to still find that balance between juggling my personal life and having an adventure YouTube travel channel on this side. So somewhere in the middle, I have to draw a line. The next question is from Joel Warnick. He's one of my Patreons. He asked a really interesting question. He said, at the beginning of this series, fear was a significant factor that you talked about. And so, looking back now, what words of wisdom would you tell Paddy of 2021 not to fear? Congratulations on and a job well done. So thank you, Joel. Yes, before I started my YouTube channel, I'd been putting it off for years. I had a successful channel with my friends, The Budgeteers, that's still alive. I'm still actually rendering in a video in the background on the table there. Um, I still edit the videos, I'm still part of that channel. I will travel with them again in the future. That's another question that comes up. Are you gonna be leaving the budgeteers? When are you going back to the budgeteers? That channel has always been a part-time thing. This is now my full-time job. And so I was scared that I didn't have the skills I didn't think I was interesting enough because when I'm with Tyson and Lena, I've got two huge, bubbly, beautiful people to bounce off and together it works. And I was worried that it wouldn't really work if it was just me, loudmouth British guy, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I find myself annoying. Sometimes when I'm editing, I'm like, oh my God, my voice is so annoying. I'm so annoying. And so I'm just kind of hoping that starting this YouTube channel, people would accept me and appreciate my idea and go with it. And thankfully, um, quite a few people do enjoy it and don't find me too annoying. So fear was a big thing. What I would tell myself is just go for it, Paddy. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Someone's knocking on the door. Sometimes when you stay in these like fancier hotels, they give you like moldy fruit. <laughs> I don't understand. And I had another big issue, which was money. I had $10,000. I had 400,000 Thai baht, and I had 100,000 in the savings as like backup. Okay, if, I'm, if I use this 300,000 baht, or around $10,000, then I'll still have that 100,000 to, to go back to Thailand, sorry, to go back to Chiang Mai, to get, get my old job back, find an apartment, and say, hey, at least I tried, and at least I'm not completely broke. But what quite, what, what, blah, 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 blah. But what quite quickly happened was the channel got monetized and I started getting views and I started getting a monthly paycheck. And we'll talk about money at the end of this video. And But that quickly made me realize oh, I'm gonna be okay. I'm glad I went for this. I was also getting a lot of support from Patreon and channel memberships and I had ideas to later on come up with other ways of making money, which I'll again talk about at the end. And just go for it, Paddy. Don't be worried, don't be scared people will either take you or they'll leave you, it's fine. And I'm still dealing with fear to this day about leaving Thailand. I'm fearful of that. I'm fearful of going somewhere new, not liking it, not my audience liking it, and just a bunch of other anxieties and fear-based stuff. But I know when I go for my evening walks, um, when I'm exercising, all my fear disappears and I get motivated to do stuff. So just keep moving, keep being active, keep being, um, get that adrenaline and dopamine fix when you exercise and then go home and quickly book that flight Get that visa and face your fears Paddy from the previous year do that. You'll be fine. I'm talking to myself now because I literally am <laughs> Dealing with fear about where to go next and what to do next. So that's good advice. I should take my own advice. Good question Joel JY and a bunch of other people in the membership and Patreon area asks, look, now you've been everywhere, Paddy, what is the best place to live, best place to travel? What are your best suggestions? And all I'll quickly tell you is my favorite province of this entire series was Shang Rai. But if you had a gun to my head and you said, right, here's a million dollars, where are you gonna live? Where are you gonna buy a, a house for the rest of your life? Um, I would probably say, I'd say Koh Samui. I still love Koh Samui. 
But I have a full in-depth five video series that's coming out very soon. Top 10 temples, top 10 foods, top 10 provinces, beaches, islands, everything is gonna be in this like five video series format. It will be like a travel guide for anybody, not just my subscribers, but anybody who's searching online for information on Thailand. I feel like with all of the footage, all of the effort that I've went to over the past year, I deserve to be able to upload five videos of best ofs. It's a bit of a cop out on a creative aspect because you know what it's like when you're watching Friends and you're really enjoying the series and then you get to like towards the end of the series and they do one of those recap episodes where they look back at and they make up videos and make up ideas like, oh, what would have happened if blah, blah, blah. Those are always just filler episodes and these videos will be creatively filler episodes. I don't have to get on Dreamy and drive around and explore. I can talk like this on a tripod and give information. And so I'll do that because I'm actually supposed to be, guys, on a break. But I do like to keep working and I do like to keep the channel ticking over. So even though I'm on a break, I am shooting this and five best of videos, which I'll upload this month. And that will give me a buffer of a real break, a week or two. I'd still want to go to Ao Nang and do some Muay Thai. Get the courage to book that flight. Get the courage to get the visas and move the channel and me to somewhere else. I still haven't got the the balls to do that yeah <laughs> so the best of and the best places it's coming Beverly she's asked me what are some misconceptions about Thailand and that's a really good question there's a lot the first and most important one is it's not as cheap as everybody says it is it's it is cheap uh, you can stay in some hostels you can eat street food and you can get by but I see a lot of youtubers saying that you can live off 30,000 baht a month and unless you're just like scrimping the barrel and you're staying in a little cardboard box apartment somewhere and you're not really doing much, then yeah, you can. But I mean, I think really you're looking at two to two and a half or three thousand US dollars budget per month, especially if you're on a holiday here. If you're on a holiday here, you're going to be spending triple that. I'm in Phuket and people say Phuket's expensive. It is. You know, my girlfriend's getting a taxi from the airport to this hotel, and the hotel told me it's gonna cost 1,000 baht, taxi, um, just to go from the airport to the hotel, and it, it is top to bottom of Phuket Island. But when I go out for little lunches and dinners here, I, I, I do think it's like 10, 20, 30 dollars. Um, of course, there are cheaper places, but just that little place next to the beach, you know, oh, I wanna go grab a beer and grab a pad kapow. I paid 200 baht for a pad thai the other day. So, Outside of Phuket, of course, it's a lot, lot cheaper, but here it's expensive. And in general, I think if you're looking to live in Thailand full time, uh, don't don't think you can live off 30,000 unless you're just really willing to just live a basic lifestyle. The other misconceptions is um, the dangerous deep south. It's not dangerous. Yala, Naritiwat, Patani, Songkla, Hat Yai. I had some of the best experiences and the best memories there. Please don't fall for the, the hype on the news. It is more dangerous than other parts of Thailand, but it's not like you're going into a war zone, like I think a lot of people think, uh, especially me when I went down there. I was worried, but I've been down there and it's fine. So don't, go down there as well. Get, get that Malaysian, get that Muslim Thai atmosphere. Ch the food changes, the people change, and it's far away from where any of the other tourists are going. So it's a real local experience. And another misconception is that, that Thailand's the land of smiles. Unfortunately, um, it's still a mask mandate. You, Thai people, especially in Bangkok, wear masks every day, all day, everywhere. And so you just never see anybody's big smiles. Uh, here in Phuket, the Thai people are way more relaxed. Where there's tourism, you know, they're a bit more relaxed and you do get to see their smiles. But unfortunately, I don't think Thailand is the land of smiles. It's the land of wearing two masks everywhere you go and uh, that's hopefully gonna disappear soon, right? One of my channel members, Mark, says, how did you feel when you had finished and would you ever take on a big challenge like this? And so, good question. The first thing I'll say is I just felt relieved. At the beginning of this series, I thought it was gonna be a nine month thing and then after about six months, I thought, oh no, this is gonna take me two years, everything was taking a long, long time. COVID, rules, and my energy levels, and dreamy breaking down, and Thailand being actually huge, 
And I just thought, oh, this is going to take forever. And there were parts where I wanted to give up. And so when I finally saw that we were near the end, uh, I was relieved. And crossing that bridge, I was proud and relieved because it's a big thing to do, go to all of the provinces in Thailand. It took a long time and it was difficult emotionally and creatively. That's definitely not a word. <laughs> and physically, mentally, I was exhausted. I didn't even like get emotional crossing the bridge. I didn't get emotional at the party because I'd spent it all. I'd left all of my emotions. I'd left all of my energy on the road with Dreamy. And so maybe when I finally get my energy levels back in place and ready to go on to the next country, I'll, maybe I'll sit down with a glass of wine at a sunset and have a thought about how great an, of an achievement it really is. Will I ever take on a big challenge like this? Yes, absolutely. I think that's the success of the channel is the fact that I go somewhere and I try something that's difficult. If I just go, okay, we're gonna go to Vietnam and we're gonna try all of the street food in the country, like, okay, great, but it's not a next level adventure, which is the brand I've built around the channel. So we would drive up and down the country on a motorbike, okay, that's a step up. And, you know, I've got other ideas where if I go somewhere, I'll go for a, a reason. I like to put things in a box. I like to say, I'm Paddy and I'm trying to go to every province. And so if I go to somewhere like, I don't know, Madagascar, for example, I'd want to go there to do something with, that I can put in a box. This is me, why I'm here, and this is the reason why you should subscribe. I think it's just good to put things in a box so that people can understand what you're doing and subscribe. and. I think it's just good for a YouTube channel. And the last question, which a lot of people have been asking is, you know, Paddy, are you making money now? Are you doing okay? How are you sustaining yourself? Is the YouTube channel sustaining you basically financially? And the answer is yes, yes. Last month was my most successful month for the channel. We broke a million views for the first time. And so, you know, the way YouTube works is it pays you for how many views and how many people watch the videos, right? And to get a million views, that equaled quite a bit of money. That was the most money I ever made in a month. And if you couple that with all the other things that I do, like I'm selling my eBooks, um, they are all in the descriptions of most of my videos or almost all of my videos. And people, they watch a video in Chayapum and they watch a video in Krabi and they look in the description and they see that I've got an eBook with hundreds of Google map links to every other province in Thailand, restaurants, hotels, things to do, and they see the price, they say, oh, that'll be useful for a holiday, and I get really good feedback in my Instagram, people saying like, oh, we're in this place, in this province, thank you, we would never have found it, oh, the ebook was really useful, thank you, and it's really good to see that selling, and it still sells passively, passive income is massive for anybody who knows anything about starting your own business, when I'm filming, when I'm editing, I'm actively working to get those views. But when someone buys the eBooks, I can be asleep. I can be at the beach having a beer or something. So the passive income's good. I'm not selling thousands of books, but I've sold, I think last month I sold 60 books, which is quite a bit of money. If you think that I'm getting about 12, 15 or $17 per book um, profit. So that's another good one. And I also get a lot of support from Patreons and channel memberships and even direct contributions. And anytime I felt really low or something bad's happened, I've actually had people just send me 50, $100 or something saying, we're really enjoying your videos, don't give up, keep going. Um, oh, we saw you broke your lens, go buy a new one. In fact, this month, I bought this DJI Pocket 2 using all of the money from Patreon and my channel memberships. And so I just sent them a thank you message. I still not sold on this camera, but it's just good to have another piece of kit. And so views, passive income from selling eBooks and direct support all adds up to, I'll be honest with you, more money than I was making teaching by a considerable amount, actually. I'm surprised. but. Just like any other business, it goes up, it goes down. April was our biggest month. January was an absolute nightmare. You know, views go up actually, because I was in Bangkok and the channel was doing really well. But your RPM, which is the rate Google pays you per million views or thousand views, went way, way down because it's January. So it was difficult to make a salary in January. And then in April, we had a, a record month. So ups and downs, ups and downs, but I'm able to book a nice hotel for me and my girlfriend for three nights. I'm able to make a bit of money actually from the channel. And so 
as the channel grows in the future, who knows? Maybe it will be a massive thing. But right now it's sustaining my lifestyle very happily and comfortably. Um, it's a lot of work and um, I, I do put a lot of work into everything obviously, but the answer is yes. I am very, very happily. Probably the thing I'm most proud about was facing the fear of doing the trip and starting the channel and worrying about my savings being enough. And I think the thing I'm most proud of is that, yeah, I wake up every morning and I, if I check, I've sold eBooks. If I check my YouTube, I see the views and I see the AdSense coming in and uh, I still get support from the people who are closest to the channel and the success and everything. So all together, that was a real great thing about this year, business side of it. So yeah, that was a quick Q&A. I've got a couple more hours to kill. It was nice to connect to you again and answer some personal questions. I uh, could answer lots, lots more, but I'm talking and I'm sweating and I'm supposed to be on holiday. And I'll quickly edit this and I'll get this up and uh, I'll go out and enjoy three days with my girlfriend, no phone. Well, I'll probably be on my phone. Let's, let's be real. <laughs> I'll try not to be on my phone and I'll definitely not be editing videos. I'll be snuggling up and watching sunsets and um, showing my girlfriend around the beautiful southern part of Phuket. Maybe I'll see you if you're around. If you are, say hello. And um, I'll introduce you to Miss P in real life. I'm always like, this is Miss P. And they're like, oh, she's so beautiful. Why don't you put her in the videos? <laughs> Uh, I'm glad I got that one out as well because that one's a thing that comes up in the comments a lot. Anyway, thanks for watching and um, the top 10 best islands, beaches, temples and foods and provinces of Thailand is coming up soon. Just waiting for something else to put all the videos together and then it's done. And then I can actually have a two week holiday from everything. Do Muay Thai in Ao Nang. Mm, mm. Okay, bye.